Hey everybody, welcome to the Emmy Heat Podcast. I'm Karen Bryant here with Alan Joban, what's up, guys? All right, folks. So listen, it is uh, it is the Monday after a really actually a quite a big weekend for MMA. So we're going to be talking about UFC Pittsburgh, where Cowboy Cerrone beat uh, Cowboy Oliveira. We'll also talk about that Alan that Bellator card. <laughs> I want to get your thoughts on on that, so we will talk about uh, the Kimbo fight and Hoist versus Ken. But how's your training going, my friend? Obviously, you've got your fight at UFC Brisbane coming up, and now it's March 20th. Now it's a month away. A month out now, and that that's when, uh, for me at least, that's when it starts becoming very real. We, yeah. Within a month, three weeks for me, a mental clock goes off. Mm-hmm. It starts getting very real. Every last rep counts, and that's also a lot of times when people start kind of... Uh, uh, putting their diet into place. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's coming around. Training's going great. Um, as you, as we we put a video out. You guys did a great video. MMA Heat. Uh, you guys came to my gym at Saxons and uh, recorded what a normal day in the life of a, a, a Muay Thai gym looks like. And uh, just like I said to you earlier, it was it was tiring watching it to see myself going through the road <laughs> the yeah. over and over. I know how much my legs burn on a daily basis, and um, it was tiring to watch, but I was glad I, I was watching at home. Yeah, you work really hard, and I will say, you know, uh, if people want to look for this video, it, it's funny, at the end of the, the show last week, we were kind of making fun of you as Roy Nelson, uh, <laughs> you know, with your with your, uh, your your body, but you are really committed to it, and that was the thing, you know, for us, just sitting there, it was a really inspiring workout, because I kind of wanted to get up and play along not that i could keep <laughs> up necessarily but i no. will say this like the environment there seems really good and you definitely are putting in a lot of work and we shot that a few weeks ago so that was at the early even earlier stages of your camp so uh i'm guessing you're really starting to throw down now so no exactly that was what seven weeks ago we're yeah. about four weeks out now so over the last three three weeks i've progressed even more so uh, i'm excited for my fight brendan o'reilly better look out <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, folks, listen up. We uh, we have a big show, so let's just first get to the first round. And I think I may have screwed the clock. So, okay. Bam. Okay, round one. So we want to talk about Cowboy Cerrone versus uh, Cowboy Oliveira. Now, this was really actually an important fight for Cowboy Cerrone because he lost his last fight, and granted, that was a title fight. And we know that Rafael dos Anjos is very good, but it was a really short fight. It was a fast fight. Donald really got commanded in that one. Uh, and so now he's moving up to welterweight, and he's trying something new. It's not his initial opponent. He was supposed to fight uh, um, Tim Means, but mm-hmm. uh, got a good win, got a triangle. It was nice to see Donald get back into victory. What would you think of the fight? Um, that's kind of how I, f- I felt of it. He went through the motions. He got a good victory. He wasn't injured. He said he wants to get right back in yeah. there again. It was uh, it was kind of one of those typical cowboy fights where you know he just kind of makes it happen. Um, I'll say this: he he moved up and weight to welterweight, but Alex Oliveira, he's also one of these guys that fluctuates between the fifty five and the seventies as well. So they were, they were realistically uh, they were both lightweights fighting at, at, at a welterweight, I believe. Yeah. Um, but you could see the size difference in in Alex Oliveira at one seventy. Um, at 170, Donald Cerrone didn't look like the taller guy, which he normally is. He's right. normally so much taller at six foot or six one. He's a tall guy for a, a lightweight. But uh, the size played an issue early in the fight. But as most people thought, the the technical fighting style of, Dow, of Donald uh, Cowboy Cerrone played a factor. And uh, the longer the fight would have gone, it would have played even more of a factor. And um, he caught an easy triangle in the beginning. I think it was more. It was a. It was a beautiful job by Cowboy by Donald. Yeah. Locking in the triangle, but I, I would say it's more of a, a a simple mistake that Alex made on his part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we were saying at work that we thought he tapped kind of quickly, and we know that he's not necessarily known for his ground skills. And I, you know, I don't know what that felt like, and if maybe he was just in a position where he felt like, you know, what I'm not getting out of it. So I may as well tap sooner than later because it didn't really seem like there was that much pressure on him yet and that things were really totally getting cut off yet. Yeah, you know, I thought about the same thing. He tapped super quick. Yeah. Donald didn't even have time to put his arm across the body or pull it on the head. Right. Donald does have long legs, and he that does have a, a lot of submission wins via triangle, mm-hmm. so he does have a, a very strong triangle. But what I think what happened was – he probably was exhaling when Donald locked it in. And so, you know, it happens sometimes. Like, if you don't have your breath and you're not preparing for it, and then they sink it in, you don't have that extra 10 seconds to fight it because you already released the air. So that's the only thing I can really imagine because he tapped super quick, and it wasn't really a clean submission as far as 
the arm being across the body, which normally is like the final, the final say so. Um, but yeah, just when, when, when he was getting mounted, he stuck his arm underneath Cowboy's leg. I'm, I'm, I'm supposing he was trying to sweep him, yeah. but he pretty much gave him, he gave him the triangle. Yeah. You know, instinctually, right away, Cowboy locked up the triangle, went to his back and locked it in. And um, as you saw, I mean, he had to kind of let the referee yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, he points to the ref. He's like, dude, I think we're done. Well, yeah, I have it was happening that you. fast. So it was a good win for him. You know, it was an easy win. He got back in a win column. He yeah. made money like he said he wants to do, you know. Right. Well, for you, though, as a, as a real welterweight, and I know that you, you know, we, we talked about the fact that, what did you say, you don't ever really go over 195 or something, right? right? That's what you said. But Correct. you are, you're definitely bigger than Donald. So do you think that's a place he could actually really live? Is that 170 or do you think he should go back to 155? I think Donald is the type of guy that he, he just, he, he loves the, the, the reputation of being a gunslinger, mm -hmm. taking a fight at any, at any, you know, at a last minute's notice. So... I think he's good at taking a fight at welterweight if it's a fun matchup. Yeah. But is he realistically trying to climb the welterweight ladder? I don't think so. I think the guys are too big and too powerful. And I'm a, I'm, I'm a welterweight, but I am a cowboy fan. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I don't need any more guys in my division stacked enough. But I don't realistically think that he's going to make a title run at welterweight. He's taking fun fights. Yeah. You know, if he's going to be the main event on a card and it's a fun fight, he's going to take it. But will he stay at welterweight? I, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. We've got about 43 seconds left in this round. The thing, too, is if he's going back to, to lightweight and to make a run at it, you know, obviously he lost to the current champ, Rafael Dos Anjos. Maybe in a couple of weeks that championship will change hands. We know that he and Connor were kind of jawing at each other at one of the press conferences. Yeah. If, the, if the title changes hands, maybe he feels that there's more opportunity you know, to, to make a run for it again at, at lightweight. I don't know, but, I, you know, I agree. I'm a, I'm a Donald fan. I like watching him fight. It's, fu it's fun to watch him win. But I'm not going to lie. I would actually like to see him fight Nate Diaz again or something like that could be kind of fun. Um, could you imagine, like, Cowboy versus Pettis? I know Pettis is going to be fighting uh, Edson Barboza. But, like, there's some fun guys if, you, if you're talking about a Donald Cerrone fight uh, end of the round there where you're giving him a, a fan-friendly matchup. Do you know what I mean? I definitely think there's some fun strikers out there for him. To, to close out the round, I think that he's established himself in the UFC as a fighter and as a name that he could do that. He could, yeah. make, he could do somewhat super fights where it's just cowboy fighting whomever. And it doesn't necessarily have to have title intentions. Mm -hmm. Fans want to see it because they're, they're fans of Donald. Yeah, he's a good dude. And did you see, I don't know if you saw, um, they gave him a new Harley at the weigh-ins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He gets all kinds of shit, man. He gets all kinds of stuff. And so I'm sitting there working with Tyra, and he's like, wait, 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 wait. Let me get this right. He's like, you lose a title fight, you yeah. move up weight class, and you get a free Harley. He's like, okay. <laughs> Donald the Cowboy. Well. You know, yeah. what are you going to do with that? Uh, I'm, I mean, the guy is fun. Uh, and obviously, he has a great reputation with Harley Davidson and stuff. So, uh, And he rolled his truck recently, right, down in Albuquerque. So I guess he needs some new wheels. Uh, as we head into round two, folks, I do want to ask you about the Derek Brunson-Ron Carnero fight. Again, this was a fast fight. Um, I, I, to say you expect more from somebody sounds like a little bit of a diss, but, you know, the, the Ron Carnero uh, I expected to see was a guy that was going to be, you know, maybe a little bit more of like a, like a hunter out there and take him down. He was so um, uh, decisive when he beat Mark Munoz in there, and that was such a great submission. So I was really kind of looking for more of this battle for it to play out. And he kind of went in and swung and missed, and Derek was able to capitalize on that. Did you expect the fight to go like that? What were, what were you expecting? You know, I, I didn't know what to expect. I feel like I haven't seen Carnero fight that, that, that frequently. The, um, he fought at the Staples Center when I fought, mm -hmm. which is when he submitted Mark Munoz. And is that was that his last fight that you're aware of? Yeah, because he he uh, it's been a year basically since he fought, and before then, you know, he was actually in the UFC before he was there, and he got cut in 2008, and then he won on the regional circuit. And he actually had a uh, one thing where he beat three guys in one night. So he's huh? he was active for a little bit, then he came back to the UFC, and then it's been a year because he had uh, he had some injuries. So yeah, maybe it's ring rust. He's had a lot of time off. I haven't seen him do that much. Mm -hmm. Whereas Derek Brunson. I mean, he, he just completely impressed me. He, 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 he looks like a football player. He gave a shout-out to the football players. Yeah. He looks, he's built like a football player. When, when his, his ability to close distance mm -hmm. was what I was most impressed with. I mean, he's got very, very long arms, and then he closes the distance so fast mm -hmm. and so explosive that it's hard to do anything. You saw, 
a, a masterful jiu-jitsu player like Conero on his back that where you thought maybe Derek wants to move away from it. But he just stood, postured up, and used his long reach. I'd love to know what his reach is. I didn't see it before the fight. Yeah, but have a I, very long I reach. have it over there. <laughs> yeah, we'll go back to it. But he's got to have a very long reach. But he, what I'm getting at is he has long reach, but he uses it very well, man. Yeah. He, the way that he blitzes people when he runs forward with the punches, um, it's really hard to get out of that other than counter-wrestle him or you know change levels. But, yeah, he did a great job, man. And um, he's one of these guys that I see like a, a very – a hot commodity. His stock rose after this fight. Yeah, I think so. I feel like, I think before it, he was ranked number 13, so it'll be curious to see how the rankings shake down. And we know that obviously the top of the middleweight division, it's kind of a logjam and there's a lot of, you know, real serious talent. But yeah, I feel like Derek is a guy that uh, could make an impact. He's fun to watch. Um, and even though that was a shorter fight, we didn't get to see if you do look back at some of his other ones. Like, he goes for it. Yeah. Maybe... Maybe sometimes he puts himself at risk because he's he gets a little crazy and a little over aggressive, but that's fun. Even though you know a great counter puncher could could clock him with something, but um, but he's fun. He, he's fun to watch. Um, but yeah, I was kind of expecting more from Carnero, um, and I know a lot of those shots at first weren't landing. I know you know people. It was a weird night for judging and refereeing. I felt like there were some weird things that happened, um, and so it kind of partly looked like hey. You're letting this Rowan one go on longer than it needs to, but at the same time, they weren't really landing. You know right. what I mean? As he wasn't really, he was, I mean, sort of defending. He wasn't really giving anything back, but at the same time, he wasn't really getting hurt. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, it was close. There, there yeah. were some shots where some judge, some referees might have stepped in right away, only because he wasn't, he wasn't, he was intelligent, intelligently defending himself, mm -hmm. but he wasn't necessarily trying to escape the position. Right. And sometimes, fighters they play to that they know that if i could just go one two one two one two right long enough where the guy can't do anything but block then it forces the ref to do something because a lot of times fighters will look right at the ref and it forces the ref to step in and you can see the ref wanting to step in right but he gave he gave canero the, the chance to get out of there he couldn't do it and then at the very end Derek did put a put a couple shots on him that looked yeah. like they kind of Kind of had him in and out, so I thought it was a good timing with the stoppage. But um, there was I just think that Derek Brunson did his pressure didn't allow Canero to show any of his skills. Yeah. He did a good job of that. Yeah, he did. Got about forty five seconds left. You know, uh, Rowan was scheduled at one point to fight Gegard Mousasi, uh, who is fighting this coming weekend against Talis Lechies. He was going to fight Bisping, and it's funny because when I did watch that fight, I thought, oh, well, it would have been interesting if he had fought Gegard. Gegard is great at top pressure and all that, but would it have been? Would he have not taken him down because he's good at jujitsu? I don't know, but the middleweight division does have some interesting things coming up. Um, what do you this weekend? I don't know if you think Anderson is going to beat Michael. I'm kind of jumping around to fight cards, but do you think Anderson is going to beat Michael? Well, I think I've told you before, Anderson holds a place in my heart. Right. I, I will never f bet against Anderson, but I will say that you know, at his age, he's obviously not in his prime any anymore. Uh, he's not as quick, and his wrestling yeah. and a mobility isn't what it used to be. And I would say that Bisbing's best chance of beating him would be to just work the transitions from boxing to takedown, boxing mm -hmm. to takedown. And I think that's the key to beating him. If he's going to stand and only box him, he might have a rough night. Or if he's gonna, only going to sit in his guard all night, he might have a rough night. Because, you know, obviously, as shown in the past, Anderson Silva, even after 25 minutes of getting ground upon it, he can still pop a triangle. But if he works the, works the boxing, takes him down over and over, ground and pounds, stays postured up, I think he has a chance of beating him. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be interesting. And I know I know Anderson is near, near and dear to you and you train yeah. at Black House and stuff. It's a it's an interesting fight. You know, there's a, there's a you can see a few different scenarios playing out. I mean, I know, you know, Michael works really hard. He's a high-volume guy. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. Got a fight pass. That's what I, I know. Mean. Well, and we also just to let people know, I did a, a nice interview with uh, with Gegard. He's one of our buddies. Um, yeah. To have a nice interview with him up as well. Uh, he actually thinks Talis Lechies is going to be a tougher fight than Michael would have been, just because um, of the, the the ground game element of it, uh, where Michael isn't known for that as much. But um, moving on to round three now, as we get back to the the uh, Pittsburgh card, I'm curious what you thought of Cody Garbrandt. Um, He's yeah. a guy that uh, a lot of people are thinking has a bright future. You know, a lot of eyes on him. He's out of team alpha male, undefeated. He's 8-0 and o now. Uh, he took that fight. Uh, uh, Mendez took that fight on short notice. It wasn't his original opponent. He's supposed right. to fight John Lineker. Um, but what do, you, what, do, what do you think of Cody? Do you think he is the guy that deserves that attention? 
Cody Garbrandt won me over with that yeah. fight. Although he was fighting a ground guy yeah. on short notice, Cody Garbrandt has been one of these guys that has somewhat had the favoritism with the UFC. Yeah. He, he's fought very hard mm -hmm. and he's done a lot of good things. Well, you know, he's got what three or four wins in the UFC. Uh, yeah, now. I think that was. So, I want to say that was his third, perhaps. Third or fourth. Yeah. So he's he's a good up and comer, but I feel like the UFC has very much gotten behind him. Yeah. So he's one of those guys that I haven't fully uh, backed completely because mm -hmm. I wanted I still wanted to see what el what else he could do without the UFC pushing everything along. Right. But man, in that fight, he he really showed how how quick and explosive he is. He's so fast. For a while, I thought that he was going. Back to the same thing over and over. I think he was throwing like a straight right and then and then a looping left hook, right. and he was and he was um, rushing forward and it wasn't landing. And I kind of was thinking, you know, is this his only tool? Is this what yeah. he goes to? And now that it's not working, he's just, he started to miss more and more. Yeah. But he, but then he started mixing up his his punch combos. Um, but he does a great job, man. I feel like his his speed his speed at bantamweight, man. He's a he's a really fast, fast athletic guy. You know, he's he's a tough guy to deal with and. I thought not only that, that he really impressed me, and, and I think that um, he deserves all the accolades that he, that he gets yeah. um, from that fight, but I thought he also probably should have been rewarded a fight of the night, uh, a performance of the night. Oh, bonus. you think so? Yeah. I thought it was, it, was, it was a great knockout. He obviously did everything he could afterward to get the crowd into right. it. You know, right. He's a fan favorite. I thought that, uh, that him and um, Sean Strickland were two guys that possibly mm -hmm. could have gotten a, a, a performance bonus that they didn't. But, um, yeah, Cody, man, hats off to him, man. He did a great job. Yeah, he did do a great job. But there were, you know, there were some other big finishes. The Bong Bo Shea finish. Yeah, okay, he's another one. Dude, you <laughs> see, because I just love right. saying that name, too. Oluwale, Bong Bo Shea. It's, it's fun. I mean, he came out and just cracks her off of it. Yeah, his style, man. I mean, when, when he, like, fake karate chopped the leg and then went with the left high kick. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's fun to watch, man. He uh, he got a new haircut. Yeah, yeah. And I'm very happy for, that he did. He looks great, and he's a, he's a, he's a dangerous striker, you know. So um, he's one of those guys that uh, I'm I'm curious to see how he develops. Right. Uh, he showed that his ground game still needs a little work in, yeah. in his debut, uh, and he came back in 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 a second fight and finished strongly. Right. So uh, I'll be watching him every time he's on a card for sure. Well, and there was an interesting fight too with the. Uh, you know, we're talking about some of these newcomers. When you talk about the veterans, with Chris Camozzi and Joe Riggs, I know a lot of people were thinking, okay, how is this? <laughs> a, how is Chris still in the UFC? A lot of people, you know, when you think about his record over the last time, you're like, are you sure there's not young talent out there? But I know Chris is a good dude, and I know he's filled in on some short notice things. Right. I think he's been, you know, a company man, and they've kept him around because he is a person that always does go and try for the finish, and he, he wants to be a crowd-pleasing, you know, fighter. Yeah. Uh most people are going to lose to Jacare, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, but I didn't expect that. Like, he broke Joe Riggs' arms with those knees, and I just did not expect uh, him to go out there and finish Riggs like that. So is that confirmed? Is, is Joe yeah, Riggs I believe it. I mean, that's what Brian was saying uh, right after the fight. Um, and so I, I, I think that is the case, yes. The, that, that fight, man, um, as you said, Kamozi... He is a bit of a company man. He yeah. takes he takes short notice fights. He does with with the company once he comes in and out of the, of the UFC now and then. Mm -hmm. And as you alluded to, most people would have lost to um, to Jacques Ray. I mean, he's one of the best guys in the world. Yeah. So you can't take anything away from him for that. He's just one of those guys that think that you know he's a uh, he's almost like a uh, he just floats in the, in, mm -hmm. in the division. I don't you know he probably is like a win one lose one type right. guy, and that's right. why it's hard for him to build momentum. Yeah. Um, he did a great job of, of dispatching Joe Riggs, but, you know, Joe Riggs has been in the game for a long time, yeah. and, and, and I think every fighter respects him. It's just that, you know, once your body starts not performing, uh, then you have to know when to go. Yeah. And um, let's Joe Riggs fight. I'll sum it up. When I see Joe Riggs fight, I, I, I instantly think that, like, one hard shot anywhere yes. could, could put him away. He's lost a lot of fights due yeah. to, like, back injury or knee injury or right. neck. And, like, when I saw him come out there, I was thinking, man, I would if I threw a hard kick to his knee, his rib, his yeah. head, I feel like it would break something. Or, like, he's being held together by duct tape right now. He's, he, he's yeah. And I, <laughs> I, no, but I, you're right. And I know what you're saying. It's it. 
He's got a lot of miles on him. Right, exactly, exactly. And it is one of those cases where, yeah, you respect uh, the effort and you respect the fact that he's a veteran and he has been around that long. But at the same time, yeah, now it gets to the point now where I'm just like, all right, dude, yeah, I don't want you to get any, like, real bodily damage. I don't want you to get hurt. You may need to stop sooner than later. While it's not our place to say, um, it's probably time. It's probably yeah. time. Uh, speaking, <laughs> speaking of time to stop fighting, uh, as we go into round four here, um, Donna 5000 and Kimbo Slice uh, fought at Bellator 149 in the co-main event. Donna 5000, not a professional fighter. Um, hopefully this will be his first and last fight. Uh, the weirdest thing about that fight, I guess, was the fact that it went into the third round. Um, most people probably did not expect that, but on, I want to know your real. Oh, there's your puppy dog. I love that dog. <laughs> he just shut up in the back. How's oh, your? Uh, he's so, he's so cute. Um, when you watch that, honestly, how were you feeling? Like, were you watching it, laughing? Were you wincing? Were you? What were you? What were you feeling? It it was for me. It was um. It was relaxing. It was relaxing. When I watched the UFC. I feel the emotions of the guys. I'm, I've been there. I know the level. I know, I know what's going on. When I watched Bellator, I had popcorn and I was live tweeting. Okay. And it was, it was, it was comedy. You know, it was comedy to me. Uh, um, you said it yourself. They, it was a record-breaking yeah. show for them. Yeah, they, they got uh, like two million views. Uh, I have to check the stats if it was two million total or if that was the peak number. But still, that is massive. To, um, it was the so arguably maybe their best show in history, correct? Yes, uh, yeah, uh, that's that's so, one for spike for sure. Yeah, it, it, that's when you have to weigh it up. Okay, so having one show that was our best show, we had great views. Does that mean that the company is now moving in that direction, right. or now did you just take the masses of of the MMA faithfuls, the the true? People that know the sport and are they not not going to take you seriously anymore? And that's what I feel like they might have done. They might have hurt themselves. They might have shot themselves in the foot, wanting the quick bang rather than the longevity of you know building talent. Because they're starting to bring guys over and guys like Dada Five Thousand. You saw his warm ups. Everybody was reposting his warm ups when he's hitting the bag. Not only did he not know how to how to hit the bag but his coach had to tell him you know right. one two elbow and then he had to physically show, show him how him. to do it right and he still wasn't doing it right and every promo they would show Kimba who knows how to throw a punch doing his warm up and then Dada would just have a sledgehammer for some reason because that was <laughs> his not only street thing fighter. you know you can't actually bring a lead pipe into the game when you can't even shadow box for the promo and they had to give you a sledgehammer you know that you know needing a prop when you're a fighter it's not a good thing. And yeah. it, it, was, it was, everybody watched it. I mean, I feel like everybody watched everybody it. Everybody watched it. Uh, my, my, uh, I, uh, my feed on Instagram, I mean, I must, I must have had over 100 likes, which, um, over 100 comments, which right. is a lot for me, because everybody was just cracking up because I posted videos of it. And, um, but I'll tell you one thing, I, I posted this is going to be a short fight. Man, was I wrong. I thought Kimball was going to go in there and knock him out. Totally. And it, there was a small piece of me that thought, you know what? But at the same time, what if these two guys just started leaning on each other? I was like, nah, that's not going to happen. And that's exactly what happened. They started leaning on each other, and Dada's weight just took it out of Kimbo. Yeah. And he had nothing left. I mean, Kimbo could barely throw punches. Dada was actually kind of coming back towards the end of the fight. No, I thought, he was. I I thought, thought at one point, was... I thought, yeah, I thought Kimbo was going to get knocked out at one point. And I will say this. I worked with Kimbo yeah. in the past. Uh, I was there the night, he, you know, he fought Seth Petrozelli. I worked with him in a couple of yeah. fights. And he's actually a, a nice guy. Um, yeah. You know, Kimbo at the time then was a product of uh, people pushing him and turning him into a star. And it wasn't really his fault. I don't fault a person for taking an opportunity. We've had that conversation about, about uh, 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 Sage. Um, right. So I don't fault Kimbo in that. I do wish he was a little bit better prepared for that. Um, but, you know, the truth of it was there was a real health scare for Dada, and the story is that he actually, you know, had heart problems there. They had to uh, um, resuscitate him. He's in, you know, went to the hospital. So that part to me is scary. I don't love the fact that the commission in Texas let him fight when clearly, I don't know what kind of medicals they did, but this is, this is a person who literally could have died. I guess technically heart stopped for a while there. That I have a problem with, and, and I agree with what you're saying about, you know, you can't sign real talent like Benson Henderson, you know, Josh Thompson, getting these guys Phil Davis, 
uh, I'm not sure how you're going to serve them if people just start to laugh at the organization. And I know Scott Coker is not a bad man. I've worked with him at Strike Force, and I believe actually his heart is in the right place in terms of wanting to take care of fighters. Um, at least he was then. But I had to, I, it's, it's hard. Well, when, when he was brought into Bellator, he's thinking, how can I re-resurrect? Re uh, re resurrect. Res right, thank you. <laughs> how can I resurrect? Thank you, sir. This promotion, and I think what he's doing, the, the the thought process that he has is he's 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 sprinkling the Japanese style of mixed martial yes. arts into it, where it's it's these it's these big introductions with the TVs, and he's got the great woman announcer who used to do Pride. Yeah, I love her, heart, right. and then he's also doing these almost kind of super fights, like in back in the Pride days where they would have a, a five hundred pound man fighting a two hundred pound man, and things like that. So it's starting to become kind of that circus uh, that 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 some of the Japanese fans love. And, and he's just trying to get the quick, quick ratings. And like you said, Dada had a health scare. And you know who's, who that lies on? It lies on the commission who sanctioned the fight. It lies on the promoter who put it together because he was Dada wasn't prepared for that. No. Um, I know the round's over. I just wanted to just touch on yeah, this we're going to well. plug right through because we wanted to keep talking about the Bellator. Anyway. Right. So the, the, the other thing that comes to mind when I, when I, when I think about this Bellator, Bellator card is, is what did Dana White think? Dana White had to have watched this. And, his, and his, when I put myself in Dana White's shoes... I think, let me see how these guys do because their Dada 5000 is my CM Punk. Dada That's exactly 5000, what we were talking about at work, yeah. Dada 5000 actually had two pro fights before this, one or two pro fights before this. They were, you know, they were against some soup cans. I think the total record of 1 in 16. Right. But I think he had some fights before this. They showed highlights. Where CM Punk has not been tested at all, not been proven, never even walked into it. So it doesn't matter how many times... He's fought WWE. Mm -hmm. This is a different sport. It doesn't matter if I'm a professional baseball player. If I'm trying to make my professional football debut and I have no football experience, right. it might not look good. So I'm wondering what Dana White thinks. You know, if 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 Bellator lost some of the legitimacy of their promotion because of this circus act that they put on, mm -hmm. although they got high ratings for one night, I yeah. think a lot of it turned a lot of viewers off. Will the same thing happen to UFC when CM Punk fights if CM Punk doesn't perform up to standards? Yeah, I understand the concern. I do think it's going to be different because I feel like CM Punk is taking it way more seriously uh, than Dada did Mr. 5000. We were also talking about that. Do we call him Mr. 5000, Dada? What, I don't know. But I, I know for a fact that, uh, that CM Punk is taking it way more seriously. Right. He's training with Duke Rufus and Rufus Court. You can't sit there and train with Anthony Pettis and the guys there and not learn something, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. and not get challenged. So I, I, that part of it I believe, and actually if you, if you talk to him, he understands uh, what a big deal it is. You know, he, he actually isn't taking it lightly. I think that's why, you know, he didn't just rush right in there and, and, and fight when he didn't feel ready for it. But I know what you're saying. The concern is are we, are we trying to get eyeballs and are we sacrificing legitimacy um, you know, I don't know, and I and I hopefully he does, because uh, I like the guy, and I hope he does fight. I know he has another injury, so it's getting set back. Um, I want to know what your thoughts are on the Bellator main event, though, between uh, Hoist Gracie and Ken Shamrock. Now, Ken actually, I guess, has uh, filed a, a complaint, and uh, you know doesn't doesn't feel that that decision was correct. Um, did you see the knee land the low blow? Do you think it was real? Do you think that was uh, really what happened? Yeah, I saw the knee land. Uh, the, the initial camera angle that they had was from behind, but mm -hmm. you could just kind of tell the way he threw the knee and the way that Ken reacted that it hit low. Yeah. And what I think what it was is it took him a second to process it. Sometimes you get hit in the balls and you wait for the pain, and it took two or three seconds to wait for the pain. Right. You know what I'm talking about. Right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, it happens all the time. <laughs> so he got hit in the balls, yeah. and it took a second for him to feel that. And by the time he felt the pain, the knee was coming to the head. Right. And But... That's in Ken's defense. That's in Ken's defense. The, the ref should have saw the shot and given him his five minutes. I, want, I, want to see, I wanted to see more. We didn't get to see a true fight. With that said, if Ken really had it in his heart, if Shamrock really wanted to fight in his heart, he would have looked past that. He's got so many fights. He's a veteran. He knows if the ref doesn't step in, then the other fighter is not going to stop. Right. And he was waiting for help. He was complaining. He wasn't defending. He wasn't trying to shrimp out or yeah. do anything. So 
he he made the mistake. He made the error in not continuing the fight, looking for a way out. So in his heart, in, in his heart, I don't think he was there. Mm-hmm. I don't think he had the fight in him anymore. He's got too many fights. You know, if if he could have been offensively better against uh, Hoyce, he probably would have fought harder. But once he got in trouble, I think he was looking for a way out. But I want to say one last thing. I will say that as bad as Hoyce Gracie's striking looked in the videos that I saw online of him hitting pads, um, man, he looked very athletic. Uh, he still looks pretty athletic for his age in there. Right. He kind of surprised me with his uh, mobility and his flexibility and everything's still there. Well, yeah, and his kicks, I mean, he actually can still get the legs up pretty high. Um, yeah. Yeah, see, my my thing is, I agree, I think it was a, a, a 1-1000, 2 1000, you know, understanding of, of the pain and then it was a little too late because then you just got clocked right here at the same time. Um, but before then, Ken really wasn't doing anything. Mm-hmm. And so, my my frustration with that fight is, you know, it's again, it's a questionable ending and a, and a controversial ending and there's going to be frustration and finger pointing. Um, but I wanted Ken to do something. And, and at the beginning of the round, he was just sitting there timing, timing, measuring. Well, even if Hoyce is, you know, still in decent shape, he's still a 49, 47, 49 49. year old man who's not moving that quickly. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand why Ken didn't really offensively mount an attack. That to me seemed a little bit strange, especially if you think you're, you know, you're avenging something and you're making (laughs) the the fights in the past that didn't go your way. Like, I expected a lot more aggression. I expected. An attack, and there really wasn't anything there. And I don't remember, you know, it's like is Ken known as just the greatest counterpuncher in the world? No, it's like, well, to, to, that was that was frustrating to me that I didn't even really feel like he showed up to fight, and 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 I wanted him to. Like I know people like to make fun of it, and they wanted to say these two old guys, but like, all right, look it, I'm here, I'm watching, I actually want to see them go for it now. And I was a little just frustrated that he didn't do that. I had Ken smashing. That yeah, that's what I said. I was, thought you didn't. You think he was going to knock his block off? My pick was the Ken was going to smash him because totally. I thought well, he doesn't have any wrestling. His his striking is just terrible. Yeah, and, and he's also I think he was about fifteen pounds undersized. He's I think way it, smaller. Yeah, he was much smaller, and um, he still pushed forward and threw those front kicks that he was famous for in UFC one and yeah. and um, yeah, I mean. He won the fight. It wasn't much of a fight. The ref should have stepped in, but Ken knows that, look, if the ref doesn't step in, you have to find a way out. If, yeah. if Hoist was trying to kill you, you have to have the mindset, if this man is trying to kill me, am I going to just wait and hope that something happens or find a way out of it? He should have found a way out of it and rather than complaining and getting so frustrated after. But would I want to see that again? I don't even know. I, I, I mean, what I, did I want the fight to go longer? Absolutely. Yeah. Do I want to see it again? I don't even know if I could sit, sit through it again. I know. I know. And it's weird. I just, the thing that's sad about it, I guess, is, you know, when, when they have fights like that, do you feel like it's taken away from the legacy? Because you feel, you've, if, if somebody was new to the sport and they see these guys, like, they maybe don't appreciate what they did do in their prime and, and that kind of thing. So it's, it's yeah. that feeling of, you're almost sad. You're you're sad that it had to go out like that because they're you. You'd rather remember them in a better way. Yeah. No, I agree. Lots of people after after the whole Bellator card were yeah. saying, uh, "I could beat Kimbo and Dada at the same time." <laughs> well, it's, people were saying John McCarthy. They were like, "John McCarthy, why don't you fight them?" Or John McCarthy. I mean, like, like everybody was calling out everyone yeah. because it 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 just it, there was no legitimate you know technique or anything and cardio and it really. In my mind, they got the viewers, but it was a step back for Bellator. Not a good decision, I don't think. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think it was a good thing either. But um, so it goes. I mean, we're all talking about it. Like I said, so they got <laughs> yeah, the point. And they did match up. They did announce a good matchup with Phil Davis and uh, King Mo. That's a decent matchup. Yeah. Um, hopefully they give it some promotion, and I'll be interested to see, you know, how they hype Benson uh, when he actually, you know, has his first fight. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But, Alan, the next big fight for us is uh, UFC 196, so we'll have to talk after that. But before that fight, did we, I, I've asked you before if you if you think Connor can pull it off. No? Yeah? No? I just watched a little video on him do, doing some movement stuff. Yeah. He's got great movement. He does all the cool stuff that everybody seems to be doing in the gym these days. Right. Will he beat Dos Anjos? I don't think so. Really? Uh, 
he, he's too he's too much of an animal, I believe. He's going to be too powerful and too strong. And he's got that relentless pressure and doesn't seem to fatigue. I don't understand how. Yeah. Um, if he pulls it off, look, Connor can do whatever he wants. If he's going to make $10 million a fight, he deserves $10 million. Right. But he says that he may want to come up to your division. The rumors swirling that he's going to fight Robbie yeah. Lawler at UFC 200 for the 170 belt. Yeah, I wish Robbie, as the spokesman for the welterweight division, yeah. Would have spoken up a little bit more when he was interviewed yeah. on on Fox Sports One the other day. He's such a modest guy. I know he is shit talker either. But man, like uh, something, just say, give me something, defend the welterweights. But yeah, yeah, he just kind of chuckles at it. Yeah, he's like, okay, yeah. son. I mean, it was funny because I was working with Tyron Woodley, and Tyron's just like, dude, you want no part of this 170 pound fist. He's like, listen, if you ever weigh, he said, what did Tyron was saying, if you've ever uh, been on the scale and it's at 140 anything. He's like, come on, son, you can't <laughs> hang with the 170s. Because it's yeah. like your point, you know, we know you walk around at 190-something. It's like, it's a right. big difference. And even though Connor is a big 145-er uh, and, and a good size for 155, uh, there's, a, there's a world of difference in what you could be putting behind your punch. Right, exactly. He's, he's a big guy. and he, yeah. he, He's a good size at 55, but once you go up to 70, then it starts, you start seeing the big differences. And uh, I don't think he would fare well, and I don't think he's going to fare well on March 5th, but I will be watching. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> I, you know, we, we, we've talked about this before. I just think he is a, a real positive force, um, and I love, I love that, in a way, he's made other people better. Like, he's made other people, whether or not they're emulating him or they're uh, pissed off at him, He's actually started to make some other people better, which I think is kind of cool. So yeah, you know, he's got a great mind for the sport. A lot yeah. of what he says, not in the shit talking area, mm -hmm. but a lot of what he what he speaks about in training and the way that uh, his psychology towards mm -hmm. fights and the way that he studies movement is very intriguing. And mm -hmm. I, I'm really uh, intrigued by it when he does all this stuff. And and I've tried some of it my, myself. I've worked on my movement, my fluidity, like he does. So yeah. He does a lot of things that uh, a lot of fighters uh, take to, love him or hate him. You see a lot of fighters drawn to the, yeah. the kind of uh, the way that he embraces the martial arts. Right, so, right. So um, he's great at what he does, man. I just, going into this fight, I think he's fighting a, a monster, and I don't think he'll win. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll we shall see what happens. And so uh, as a reminder, folks, we do have this great workout. It's about, uh, came, the video came out to basically like half an hour, and yeah. it's a, a composition of Alan's workout, his Muay Thai workout. Uh, and that workout you actually do, how many times a week are you out there at Saxon's? Uh, it's, I do nine, about nine workouts a week at Saxon. I'm probably there about four or five days four a week. Five, right, right, right. Well, it's definitely great. And we still have the interview part to put out as well. So Wade will be getting on that one. So people definitely need to look for that up on the MMA Heat channel on YouTube. And, um, like I said, we're a month away from your fight. So it's getting down to it, my man, you know, so every week, what you're going to drop probably what another five pounds a week or something or. Me, when I get to about two to three weeks out, that's when I just started cleaning up the diet. And yeah. then a week out, I just do the water. I have a pretty clean cut. Like yeah. I, we mentioned, I, I cut about 20 pounds. So about the first eight of that is just a clean diet. And yeah. the remaining 10, 12 of that is uh, water. So I don't really cut weight until two weeks out. Two so weeks. I'm still uh, living good right now, eating good, <laughs> um, but training very hard. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. That'll and so where can folks find you on social media? Everything on social media, guys, check me out at Alan Joban, uh, Twitter, you name it. I'm on social media. Give me, a, give me a follow. Cool. And if you guys didn't see our last episode, you have to. If you want to see what would happen, worst case scenario, Alan Joban lets it all go. If you want to see what Fat Alan looks like, he's... <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Check it out. It's pretty funny, guys. It's, check it out. It's hilarious. We, we were rolling laughing uh, with that picture. So uh, thank you for letting us have some fun at your expense there. You guys, I liked it. <laughs> awesome. Well, you can find me on Twitter at Karen Bryant. You can find me on Instagram, KB Heat. We have our YouTube channels for Karen Bryant and MMA Heat. We got Facebook for MMA Heat, all that good stuff. So I uh, hope you guys check it out. And if you're looking for the audio links for this, go to MMAHeat.com forward slash podcast. And we have iTunes and Stitcher links. Alan, thank you so much, my friend. Good to see you. You as always. Thank you. Keep, keep your hands up. Always. <laughs> okay. We'll see you later. Thank you.